All right, Shalom, Shalom. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash. Double honors to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto you, elect, across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and sincerity. I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas camp, coming at you all with another lesson through the Spirit. And Lord's willing, this lesson here is edifying. And this is going to be um, a lesson in regards to um, oppression. All right. Because you had Captain Zariak from the ISUBK have a discussion with Jesse Lee Peterson a few days ago. And one of the questions that Jesse Lee Peterson had asked to Zariak from the ISUBK, he asked, are we as quote unquote black people? which we know we're the Israelites, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, but he asked the question, are we oppressed? And Captain Desariak said, the Israelites are oppressed, but he is not oppressed. And um, Apostle Har had done a lesson on it, even um, the elder brother Kazak from the Mississippi camp had done a lesson on it. Brothers have done lessons on how Desariak was wrong, you know, because us being here in Babylon, still under the curses, are oppressed and we're not gonna that, that oppression is not gonna be relinquished until our Lord Yahweh comes back and delivers us as is written of in the book of Isaiah the 19th chapter they shall cry because of the oppressors and he shall send them a, a, a he shall send them a deliverer and that deliverer being Yahweh and he's going to absolve us all right he's gonna absolve us from the state of oppression that we are in okay and as that takes place once the curses are finally lifted off of us, those curses are going to be placed on our enemies. OK, and one of those curses, all right, in a nutshell, is oppression. All right. Even the Apostle Dahar and the lesson that he did in the response to that, the Apostle Dahar made the statement going into even when we were in the time of um, Judges. I believe he said on um, time of Judges. All right. Or, or Joshua. I believe it was Joshua, actually. When we went into the land of Canaan. All right. We had oppressed those heathen. All right. And that's actually so we have oppressed those heathen. And there's actually an account that I want to get really quick in Joshua. I believe it's in Joshua 13. Let's see here. Hold on. No, it's in Joshua 9. And this is going into, you know, what we had done. Unto those Canaanites. All right. This is what we have done unto those Canaanites. when We had taken that land. Now, this is the point that I want to go into. All right. Because we had placed those Canaanites in captivity to a degree in a nutshell. When we had took when the Lord had given us that land, which he had promised us. All right. Now, I'm going to start at Joshua 9 and 18. And this lesson is going to be based on how in the kingdom, the heathen are going to be oppressed, starting with Esau, Edom. All right. The kingdom are going to be I'm sorry, the heathen are going to be afflicted as we were afflicted. All right. And again, that starts with Esau, Edom, namely Esau, Edom. All right. And after even the heathen's time is up, they're even going to enjoy the kingdom. But when we receive the kingdom. All right. We're going to rule over them. OK. And those that had oppressed us and punished us in a very uh, rigorous fashion are going to be oppressed. Likewise, this is Joshua 9 and 18. And the children of Israel smote them not because the princes of the congregation had sworn unto them by the Lord, all right, Yahweh, God of Israel, and all the congregation murmured against the princes because we were supposed to smite those Canaanites when we took that land. All right, we were supposed to smite them, but I believe it was the children of Ai. All right, or um, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, okay. But pretty much, we had pretty much made um, an agreement with particular Canaanites in that land. It says, but all the princes said unto all the congregation, we have sworn unto them by Yahweh God of Israel. Now, therefore, we may not touch them. This will we do to them. We will even let them live, lest wrath be upon us because of the oath which we swear unto them. See, there was an oath that was made unto particulars of those Canaanites. And the princes said unto them, let them live. But let them be hewers of wood and drawers of water unto the congregation as the princes had promised them. 
All right. And when you go into drawers of water or drawing water. All right. That is a form of them being subservient unto us. All right. Them being held captive unto us. So those Canaanites were subservient unto us. We had taken that land. OK. All in all, they were slaves to us. OK. And just to prove that that scripture going into drawers of water is indeed synonymous for captivity. Let's go into the book of Psalms, chapter 137 and start from the top. And then I continue on the lesson going into how they're going to be oppressed. Now, this is Psalms 137 and one. It says, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. And this is going into when we were held captive. All right. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there, they that carried us away captive required us a song. You see the captives. All right. And they that wasted us required us mirth, saying, sing one of those songs of Zion. All right. So, again, when you go into that, you got the example of us being captive. All right. And let's see here. But the point in the beginning was by the rivers of Babylon. All right. And what do we do by those rivers? We drew water. All right. We were drawers of water by Babylon. All right. That is synonymous for us being held captive or us being subservient. OK. And let's go to one more example here. Let's go to one more example here in Judges. It's the book of Judges, chapter five, verse 11. They, they that are delivered from the noise of archers in the place of drawing water. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. All right. But the point is at the beginning. All right. Being delivered from the noise of archers in the place of drawing water. All right. Drawing water. And again, that is synonymous for for us being in servitude. All right. Or for servitude. All right. The place by drawing water, as it was written of in Joshua, the ninth chapter, we made those Canaanites drawers of water. And when we receive the kingdom, it's going to happen all over again. All right. Namely, with Esau, Edom. All right. Being at the top of that list. OK, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 60. This is Psalm 60 and eight. Moab is my wash pot over Edom. Will I cast out my shoe? Philistia triumph thou because of me. All right. So, again, that's just another example going into the fact that we are going to have them subservient into us. OK, now I was doing some reading yesterday and I want to read in um, Zechariah, the 10th chapter, because when you read this here in Zephaniah, Zechariah, the 10th chapter, it is a, a, a beautiful chapter going into how we are going to be delivered. All right. And how when we are delivered, we are going to have the heathen under us. All right. Again, they are going to be pressed. The heathen are going to be pressed when we are in rulership. All right. As we were pressed when they were in rulership. So this is the book of Zechariah, the 10th chapter. And I'm going to start at verse four. All right. Matter of fact, I'm going to start at verse three, actually. And it reads, my anger was kindled against the shepherds and I punished the goats. All right. Now, who are these goats that he's talking about being punished? OK, who are these goats? When you go into goats. All right. Um, you know, this word here for goats namely goes into the rulers of the people. And when you look at today's society, all right, when you look at who's ruling the world right now, as is written in Job 9 and 24, the earth is given unto the hands of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? All right. And then through the scriptures, when you understand how to read and navigate through the scriptures by the spirit, you get to see and point out who the wicked is. That beareth rule over the earth is, and it is Esau Edom. It starts with Esau Edom, with his global elites. All right, those Chaldeans. All right, like you have the the Gettys, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, the Merovingians. Those different families rule the earth, and then you have Edomites that are under them that rule as well. Okay, that aren't on the same level, but they're still ruling. Via example, you got Bill Gates. 
All right, what's another? What's a, what's another multi multi billionaire? You know, uh, what's the man's name? Um, ah, man, I can't remember his name right now. He's over uh, Nebraska Furniture Mart and a bunch of other businesses. You know, what I'm saying Lord's will. His name um, when it, it Lord's will. I can think of it during this lesson. Okay, but uh, but anyway, there's a plethora of Edomites that are ruling the earth right now. All right. But as the scriptures say, the earth is given unto the hands of the wicked. These are the goats. All right. So when you go into the word goats here in the Hebrew, that word there is Ithawad. OK. And it says a ram, a he goat or a chief one. OK. So when you go back to Zechariah chapter 10, verse three, it says, and I punish the goats. All right. Or another word to say goats are the chief ones. Now, it's ironic that the word goat is used right here. All right. This makes me think of Daniel, the eighth chapter. And starting at the fifth verse, because another reference for goat or the goat being in rule. All right. It was a particular nation of people that started ruling first who were the Greeks. All right. That were called the he goat here in Daniel eight and five. All right. And through toiling in the scriptures and understanding. All right. The he goat is most definitely those Greeks were Edomites around this time. All right. Those Greeks were Edomites. This is Daniel eight and five. And as I was considering, behold, and he goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground and the great had a notable horn between his eyes. And this is a prophecy going into the Greeks that started to rule and how Alexander. All right. Out of Greece. All right. Who was really a, you know, who was a Macedonian. All right. But out of that line, out of that, out of that people, Alexander ruled and he's that notable horn that's there. All right. But going into that, this right here, this goat references Greece or Grecia. All right. And the Edomites had ruled Grecia around that time. Those were Edomites. All right. So when you jump back to Zechariah 10 and verse three, it says, and I will punish the goats for the Lord of hosts had visited his flock the house of Judah and hath made them as his goodly horse in battle out of him came forth the corner. All right. And this corner is talking about Yahweh Shai as it's written of in the book of Isaiah 28 and 16 going into, um, I'm sorry. Um, matter of fact, let me just get that real quick. It's the book of Isaiah chapter 28 verse 16. It says, therefore, thus saith the Lord Yahweh, behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. OK, so that corner is talking about Yahweh Shai right here. All right. Out of him, the nail. OK, and that nail is another sign of um, Yahweh Shai. All right. Because the nails mean to fast down. Matter of fact, let's pull up another precept. This is Isaiah 22 and 23. It says, I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place, and he shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house. And this is a prophecy talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai. Okay. So when you continue here in Zechariah 10 and 4, it says, and out of him, the battle bow, like when you read in the book of Revelation, the sixth chapter, of him that sat on that horse, all right, that white horse. It says, and I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and the crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. And by the way, when you go into the word conquer, it isn't no light thing, okay? When Yahweh Shai comes with those chariots, with the angels, all right, he's going to conquer, all right? And conquer is never a light thing. Conquer means when you go into the word like literally it means to take by force okay that word in the greek is nikaio all right and it means to be victorious over all of your foes and who is our main foe right now who is our main enemy it starts with esau edom okay so when yahweh shai comes with his glory in his glory he's going to conquer the heathen he's going to conquer the nations just as the nations had conquered over us, it's going to be over them. Just as the nations had us oppressed, they're going to be oppressed, starting with Esau, Edom. Okay? They are going to be oppressed.
And when you read it in Deuteronomy 30 and 7, it says the same curses that befell upon us are going to fall upon the heathen. OK, so the curses are going to be lifted from us and that's going to be fulfilled, as I stated earlier, when Yahweh Shai comes and when those curses are lifted from us, they are going to be placed on our enemies. And part of the curse was being oppressed. OK, so when Yahweh Shai comes with all of his glory, all right, and he proves victorious over his foes, they're going to be oppressed. OK, and that's just that's just what it is. It is what it is. All right. Now, according to Christianity and people, you know, it'll be a hard pill to swallow, but it doesn't change the fact what the scriptures say, what the prophecies say. OK, the heavenly father is just and he's going to render unto them double. All right. That was given unto us. It has to be double oppression that's given unto them. OK, so when you jump back to Zechariah chapter 10, verse four. Let me get back to it. It says, out of him came forth the corner, which is the cornerstone of Shai. Out of him came the nail, out of him the battle bow, and out of him every oppressor together. All right? Every oppressor together. Now, who are, the, who, who, who are these oppressors that are coming together? Let's continue in verse 5. Because now it's going into the oppressors. And they, being the oppressors together, and they shall be as mighty men which tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle, and they shall fight because the Lord is with them. And the riders on horses shall be confounded. And I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph, and I will bring them again to, the, to place them, for I have mercy upon them, and they shall be as though I had not cast them off. For I am the Lord their God, and will hear them. All right. And that's going to be fulfilled when Yahweh Shai comes with the Holy Host and delivers us, man. All right. Because, again, as it's written in Isaiah 19, it says they shall cry unto him because of the oppressors and he shall send them a deliverer. So when Yahweh Shai comes and absolves us from our oppression and saves us, that is going to be brought to them. All right. They're going to be tread down as we were tread down. They're going to be broken shivers as we were broken shivers. OK. This is the book of Revelation, the second chapter. And this is in verse. This is in verse 26. It says, and he that overcometh and keepeth my words unto the end to him will I give power over the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. Who's going to be broken to shivers? It's going to be the nations. All right. Matter of fact, when you read this in the NLT, it says they will rule the nations with an iron rod and smash them like clay pots. Now, that sounds like oppression to me. OK, now, obviously, it's going to be fair. Obviously, we're not going to rule heinous like the Edomites did. But when you read Deuteronomy 30 and 7, where it says these curses are going to fall upon our enemies that's given unto us, they got a drink of that cup. All right. They got a drink of that cup. And part of that is them being subservient unto us. Like it was read in Joshua, the ninth chapter, where those Canaanites were made hewers of wood and drawers of water. That's going to apply to the heathen when that time comes. All right. When we're in our glorified states, they're going to be drawers of water. All right. So Esau Edom is in his full glory right now. We see his glory waning, but he's still in his glory right now. And we are still and oppression under this devil. All right. You still got to pay. You still got to pay your tax for your car. OK. You can't fly nowhere without. Um, you can't fly nowhere overseas, I should say, without a passport. OK. There's a lot of things that you cannot do and you are not allowed to do in this society because you are oppressed. OK. You still consider three fifths of a human being to this day. You are oppressed. But that's getting ready to be lifted. All right. And as we've been dashed in pieces, I mean, all you got to do is look at our history. It speaks for itself. But as we've been dashed into pieces, they're going to be dashed in pieces. As we built this place up, they are going to be building our places up. All right. And that leads me to another precept here. And that's going to be in the book. 
of Isaiah chapter 60. All right. In the whole chapter, the whole chapter is a, a very good chapter to really just just sharpen up on this point that I'm making. The whole chapter goes in, but I'm going to start at verse three. All right. And it says, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light. And this is when we are in the kingdom. This is when we are being established. OK, it says and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round right about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy son shall come from far and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then shall thou see and flow together and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. And when you go into the forces of the Gentiles, that word force in the Hebrew is the word chayal, and it means wealth, strength, ability, forces, might, efficiency. So we're going to have the strength or the wealth, I should say, or the substance of the Gentiles. All right. And that's just what it is at the end of the day. OK. It says the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, and they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Neboeth shall minister unto thee, which means serve, the word minister. They shall come up with a acceptance, acceptance on mine altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their windows? Surely the isles shall wait for me and the ships of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them unto the name of Yahweh, thy God, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he had glorified thee. All right. So this is these are the heathen giving us their forces. When you read about this, the dromedaries of Midian, the camels, all these things are the examples of how we're going to attain and receive the forces of the Gentiles. And this is when we're in our glory. OK, it says, therefore, thy gates shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles and that their kings may be brought. So it's going to be a constant flow. They're going to be in subservient servitude under us. They are going to be subservient under us. All right. Who are Israelites? All right. Being us. Verse 12 says this for the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. All right. That sounds like oppression to me. Just as our Lord Yahweh Shai said this in the book of Luke, chapter 19, verse 27. And this is a precept to that. This is Luke 19 and 27. And this is in the New Testament. It says, and this is our Lord speaking. But those mine enemies, all right, because remember in Revelation 6, going into he who had sat upon that white horse with a bow in his hand and a crown on his head. And it said went forth conquering and to conquer. And that word conquer means to be victorious over all his foes. Now, the word foes goes into the word enemy. All right. So it says, but those mine enemies or foes, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. All right, now that, that doesn't sound too nice to a lot of these Christians that are out here, man. That doesn't sound too nice. And you got to think about it. When David came in power, when David got in power, all right, he obliterated the heathen. Okay, he beat them into subjection under them, under him. All right, and the same thing is going to apply with us as well. Okay, matter of fact, let's get an account of when Jerusalem was taken. All right, let's get into the account when David... And, 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 and his forces, all right, had taken Jerusalem and established Jerusalem as being the city of David. Because as David had done this, and Yahweh is going to sit on the throne of his father, David, he's going to have to do it in the same exact way. And this is an example of David conquering his foes. OK, so this is in the book of First Chronicles, chapter 11. And I'm going to start from the top. All right. 
It says, then all Israel gathered themselves together, Salakim. Then all Israel gathered themselves to David unto Hebron, saying, Behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. And moreover, in time past, even when Saul was king, thou was he that led us out and brought us in Israel. And the Lord thy God said unto thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be a ruler over my people Israel. And this is talking about David. All right. Therefore came all the elders of Israel to the king to Hebron. Because you remember, all right, David ruled seven years in Hebron. All right. He was king in Hebron seven years. And after that seven years, when he ruled in Hebron, he ruled in Jerusalem for those 33 years. And this is the account of him taking Jerusalem. All right. Verse three says, therefore came all the elders of Israel to the king, all right, to the king to Hebron. And David made a covenant with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king to be over Israel, according to the word of the Lord by Samuel. And David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, which is Jebus, where the Jebusites were and the inhabitants of the land. And who are these Jebusites? They were Canaanites. All right. When you go into it, it says descendants of Jebus, descendants of the third son of Canaan who lived in or around the site of Jebus, the early name for Jerusalem. All right. So before Jerusalem was called Jerusalem, it was called Jebus. All right. Well, in the Hebrew, let's, let's just go into it in the Hebrew. That word there in the Hebrew is Yabawas. All right. Yabawas. So it was, it was called Yabawas before it was called Yerushalayim. All right. Or Yerushalayim, which means city of peace. OK. And in order for it to be the city of peace, it had to be taken first. All right. So when you go back to the precept, it said, and David and all Israel went to Jerusalem, which is Jebus, where the Jebusites who were Canaanites were the inhabitants of the land. Now, check this out. And the inhabitants of Jebus said to David, thou shall not come hither. Nevertheless, David took the castle of Zion, which is the city of David. And David said, whoever smiteth the Jebusites first shall be chief and captain. So Joab, the son of Zariah, went first up and was chief. All right. So Joab was the first one that was ready for that smoke to smite those Canaanites in that land. And best believe everybody else followed suit. It wasn't just Jebusite. That, I'm sorry. It wasn't just Joab that killed one of them. And everything was just 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 lalas and, and roses and daisies. No. It was an all on slaughter, all right, in the city of Jebus. And that's how it always was in the ancient world. Whenever you seized a kingdom, it was slaughter. It was blood that was spilled, all right? You would slay a lot of men, okay? You would even slay a lot of children, okay? You would leave their, their wives, shave their heads, and they would mourn for that period of time, okay? And then they were ours. And that's just what it was at the end of the day. So, when you go into that account, all right, it was an example of David conquering those Canaanites to take the land of Jerusalem, all right? And best believe, man, that was a form of oppression, all right? When they served under David, they oppressed, the, the, we oppressed them, all right? And that's just what it was at the end of the day. So when Yahawashah gets on his throne, all right, and sits on the throne of his father, David, it's going to be in like fashion. OK, and that's just what it is, as much as it's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of these so-called Bible believers and these people that claim to believe in the Lord. All right. They'll think he's going to come down riding on a unicorn or something like that. Yahweh Shai is coming back for war. As it's written in Exodus 15, the Lord is a man of war. Yahweh is his name. And Revelation 19 says. And I'm, I want to jump back to Isaiah 60 as well after this. But when you go to it in Revelation 19 and 19, all right, it says 19 and 11, Salakia, and I saw heaven opened up and behold a white horse. And this is the same white horse that it was read about in Revelation 6, where it says a crown was on his head and a bow was in his hand and a bow was a weapon of war. So it says, and I saw heaven opened in a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Okay. 
So he's going to do the same thing that his father David did before he sat on the throne in Jerusalem. Yahweh Shai is going to come in a more glorious fashion with the host of heaven this time. And the elect are going to be following with him. All right. Well, I should say this. The elect are going to get beamed up, but the elect are going to get busy with that action after our Lord Yahweh Shai. All right. But it's going to be an all out, all out slaughter. And we're going to beat the heathen in subjection and rule over them with a rod of iron. And we shall dash them to shivers if they if they go off. OK, if they go off. And that's just the truth of the matter, because there was a point that I forgot to make as well. Jumping back to Zechariah chapter 10. All right. Because right here is calling Yahweh Shah's uh, followers out of him, every oppressor together. And when you go into that word oppressor. That word is nagas, nagash. And it says to press, to drive, to exact. OK, to exact. And judgment is going to be exacted on these people demanding pressure. It says a driver, taskmaster, ruler, oppressor, tyrant, lord. All right. We're going to be lords over these people. All right. Exactor of tribute. OK, so. We are going to be exactors over them. We are going to be rulers, judges over these people, exactors over these people. All right. So. When you jump back to Isaiah 60 and I read this here in Isaiah 60 and 12, it says for the nation and kingdom that will not serve these shall perish. All right. Just as Yahweh said in Luke 19 to 27. All right. For those mine enemies that shall not that I shall rule over them, bring thee hither and slay them before me. It says, yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. The glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee. The fir trees is going right back to the forces of the Gentiles. All right. What I just read all the way on down was going is going into the forces or the substance of the heathen. It says for the fir trees, the pine tree and the box together to beautify the place of my sanctuary. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion or monument of the Holy One of Israel. That is oppression. All right. They're going to come bending the knee like on for those of you all that saw Game of Thrones. You know, come here and bend the knee. All right. That's an ancient phrase. Bend the knee because that shows yourself to be subservient over somebody. All right. You're acknowledging that person to be your Lord. All right. You're a, a, a ruler over you, a master over you. OK. It says "Thou shalt suck the milk of the Gentiles and shall suck the breast of the kings, which ultimately it embodies just us getting their force, their substance. OK. It says, and thou shalt know that I, Yahweh, am thy savior and thy redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. For brass, I will bring gold and for iron, I will bring silver for wood, brass and for stones, iron, meaning he's going to give us the best, the best of the best. And it's even going to be more than we expect. All right. As much as we can quantify it and try to figure out in our minds exactly how it's going to be. Just know that the heavenly father is going to give us even more. OK, it says, I will also make thine officers peace and thine exactors righteousness. And when you go into the word exactors, it means oppressors, because when you go into this word exactors here. That word is nagash and that word nagash is the same word for oppressors in Zechariah 10 and 4. OK, the word is nagash. All right. So just going into all of that. We are indeed going to have the heathen bend the knee unto us. All right. We're going to take them as is written in Revelation, the 13th chapter. He that um, he that leadeth in the captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed by the sword. Here's the patience of the faith of the saints. All right. So whatever the heathen had done unto us when we were under the curses. All right. Is going to be done under unto the heathen. All right. And that starts with Esau and Edom. OK. Matter of fact, I'll end it off here in Psalms 149 and 8. 
Because people, people will look at us like we got two heads when we say um, slavery is in the Bible. And in the kingdom of heaven, there's going to be slavery. There's going to be people under us because they have this idea, all right, due to their wicked theology that, you know, the only way to receive salvation, you got to die first. All right. And then when you die, you're in this pie in the sky where you're there forever, which is false. The heavenly father created the earth to be ruled and governed over. All right. That's what the earth was created for. It was created to be ruled. And Adam had that first dominion. But when we had fell, all right, and that was due to sin being brought forth. All right. The, the, the with Eve eating of that fruit, partaking in that knowledge and Adam following suit, death was brought forth and we were brought down from our state of glory. All right. We're thrown out of the land of um, the land eastward in Eden, the garden. All right. And it was constant falling afterwards. But when Yahweh comes back, all right, when Adam comes back, everything's going to be set right again. And it's going to be complete governance over the planet Earth on how it was intended to be from the beginning. OK, so this is the book of Psalms, chapter 149, verse eight. Matter of fact, I'm going to start at verse six. It says, let the high praises of the most high be in their mouth and a two edged sword in their hand. And what is a two edged sword? That is a weapon of war. All right. Because it's going to be conquering that takes place. And we're going to be praising the Lord while that's happening. Verse seven says this to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. 